Hello you two, what's up? Um, today we're going to continue doing some writing together. Who can tell me what our writing focus this term is? Say it out loud in three, two, one. If you said informative writing or information reports, you are correct. That is what we're looking at. We've been looking at informative writing. Um, writing texts with the purpose to inform someone of something. That's what we've been looking at. We're going to move along with it. Might I say before we start though, I was super impressed. And I know your teachers were super impressed with the information reports that you wrote last week on an animal. You guys, um, you did some great research to find awesome facts. You put them into paragraphs um, about specific topics. You use descriptive language and technical language. And they were all really awesome. And I learned so many new facts about so many different animals. That's so good. Today we're going to go a little bit deeper into this and we're going to look at what's called descriptive and comparative language. Okay, these are just different language features that we use when writing informative texts. We've already had a little bit of a look at descriptive language, so we're going to have a look at comparative language as well. So let's have a look. Informative texts, these are just a, a few different language features that we use. We use the language of generalization. We're not going to focus too much on it, but I want to bring it up anyway. Now this is used to make general statements about a subject. For example, all tigers are mammal. That word all is generalizing tigers. They are all mammals. Okay, we would use that pretty frequently throughout an information report about any animal because it's most likely that all sharks eat fish. Okay, and it's quite likely that all lions live in the jungle. And it's pretty likely that all birds can fly, even though not all of them can. But do you know what I mean? That's generalizing, okay? What we're looking at today is the next two though, the language of description and the language of comparison. So firstly, the language of description. This is used to describe the subject in a clear and factual way. That word factual is so important. We don't wanna describe parts of an animal or things about an animal using opinions. We, wanna, we don't wanna say pandas are beautiful animals, okay? Because some people might find pandas beautiful, but others might not. We wanna use facts. So for example, tigers have strong bodies, broad paws and sharp teeth. They're all factual, strong, broad and sharp. They have facts about a tiger and it is descriptive. We don't wanna just say tigers have bodies, paws and teeth because that's not very interesting. It's not very informative. You're not telling me that much. When we use that descriptive language, um, it makes it really well written, really informative. So that's what we wanna do. The last one's the language of comparison, a little bit different. This is used to describe similarities and differences. When you compare two things together, you're discussing the similarities and differences, and we can use this in informative writing. For example, tigers are the largest member of the cat family. Okay, that's a great fact, and it's comparing our tigers to other animals in the cat family, and it's saying that it is the largest. You could say that this animal has the longest tail out of any of the animals, whatever it might be. So that's how comparative language comes into play. Your tasks for today, I need you to listen carefully now, in particular. Now you'll see this, uh, speaker looking thing, you want to click on it and listen. You'll need a blank piece of paper and you're going to draw what you hear. So I've explained, I've, I've set a description and I want you to draw what you hear. Okay, you can pause it, you can listen to it a few different times so you can make it really good and then post a picture. And then we're just going to repeat the process, but you'll find that this one, I use more descriptive language and more comparative language when I do my description, when I say it out loud. So your drawing should be easier because you, I've included that, that language, okay? So see how you go with that. Make sure you upload a photo. Then there's five questions to answer. Which of the two descriptions were easy to draw? Why? What are some examples of descriptive language in the second description? So you might have to go back and listen. What are some examples of comparative language in the second description? You might have to go back and listen. And why do you think it's important to use descriptive and comparative language in informative writing? So have a think about that. And then you can do this fun activity that you can find in your learning from home pack where you create an imaginary animal. There's some descriptive terms down here on the first sheet to help you draw one. And then you can compare with other animals. So what is your animal bigger than? What is it smaller than, etc. Once you finish that, you have the option to write an information report, just optional, but you can write an informational, an information report on your imaginary animal. Okay, don't go researching facts because it's your animal. You made it up so you can make up the facts. Okay, so have fun with that. That's a little fun one for you. And then you can post a photo um, of your worksheets here. I hope that makes sense. And I hope you can understand why it's important to use descriptive and comparative language. Enjoy.